freezing. But that's no matter because the day is a good day. It might be freezing, it might be misty, it might be early. But we're off to Barbell Brigade today and today we're going to be looking at some strength and conditioning training with a specialist coach who is an absolute expert in this field. This is going to be an ongoing episode looking at strength and conditioning in terms of what's going to help you be more explosive, stronger, better at sports, just better in general. Plus, we're going to be taking a look at impingements, how to fix them, how to stay healthy. This is something I've never really done before and it's something most people don't focus on but we really should be doing so let's ignore the clouds ignore the cold and crack on so we have arrived at a black country barbell but not without incident I try to start my day positively all the time but sometimes sometimes the world wants to kick you right in the dick and by dick I mean alloys oh that's so painful to look at I reached for some water whilst I was umbopping to Hansen in the car. Yep, that's right, Hansen, and clipped the curb. Oh, ho, 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 you think that's bad? Oh, you took out your front alloy. Wait. Oh, it's a two for one deal. Yeah. Yeah, we managed to just do two wheels in one go all the way around. Circular life carousels. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This shit happens in life. Good things are carrying on. So we're here at Black Country Barbell. Today we're going to be working with a little fella called Jake. This man. And this is a face you're going to get used to seeing on the channel because Jake is a specialist in strength and conditioning. Today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at my physique as a, and we're going to break it down. He's going to take a look at a relaxed position and see initially where he thinks there's problems. We're going to then give you guys a fundamental basis on where to start to look to see if you have impingements or anything like that then we'll give you some exercises today to take and go straight on with that are going to help if you don't have impingements prevent them and if you do have issues hopefully they're going to help start building that foundation to fix them so without further ado let's crack into the more professional looking side of this video oh also beards that's strong well nipple. strong nipple look at it that is strong it is See, but I went for double layers. Oh, <laughs> I've been ghosted. Quick one, why is strength and conditioning so important? Go, Jake. Not only is it gonna make you a more powerful athlete, a stronger athlete, a more dominant athlete. From this series, we know that my, the culmination of one part of the series is me getting back into that ring, back into a cage. But also what we're gonna be doing is following that through into a competitive situation in regard to physique competitions or maybe bodybuilding we'll see at the time. So. All of these factors come into play whenever you're training for anything, you're going to be beating down the body, you're going to be developing bad tendencies, bad habits. It's a complete natural thing and everyone's going to have them to some way, shape or form. Your strength and conditioning style focuses on picking up on these weaker areas, finding out the reasoning why, strengthening the foundation to stop those bad habits forming. Absolutely, and creating sort of an athlete and a system where you can then keep doing this for a long time without necessarily beating the body down. I always tell people, I want to build you up, not beat you down. We're going to take now a quick look basically my relaxed uh, positioning of my body. Jake's gonna go through, he's gonna point out any areas that he can see immediately off the bat. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you guys through some self-diagnosis, some little movements, simple things, yep. that you can check for yourself to see whether you are suffering from any impingements or reasonings as to why you're feeling pains in certain areas. As this series develops, Jake's gonna be getting more specific with me and obviously then if any of that pertains to you, you can follow this on like for like. If you need to hit Jacob on a personal level for anything, all his links are gonna be in the description for every one of these videos that you'll see. So don't be afraid to slide into his DMs. He loves a good nude. <laughs> First of all, I'm gonna look at some of like the, the most common faults that I see with athletes and fighters, and then apply that to Lex, apply that to you guys, so you guys have something to go away with and work on yourselves. We're gonna look at how to self-assess as well, um, and how, yeah, you can basically use the stuff moving forward. Jake's very good at making you get naked very quickly. Just to point that out, ladies, just in case you're sliding in those DMs. <laughs> So as we said, we're going to take a quick look now. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> we're going to take a quick look now at my relaxed posture, and Jake's going to immediately go through anything that he sees. I'm going to completely relax, so I'm going to let everything hang loose. And we can see some uh, asymmetries already happening. We've got some tilt coming out in the shoulder area here. So what we've got is a little bit of this imbalance going on here. You can see I'm hitching on this left shoulder. That's due to an impingement in this, or damaging my shoulder in previous times. A little bit of a wing scapula. He stands at the profile side for me. See, we've got a slight forward head posture and a slight extension to the trunk. Uh, a, lot of common, a lot of people will commonly refer to that as anterior pelvic tilt. And it's not always an issue unless it causes an issue. So what we're talking about, that trunk extension. So you can see my, my uh, trunk wants to kind of relax out. This makes the lower back lazy. 
and it melts the, the hips tilt that way. So if I pull my hips in and activate my glutes, immediately you'll see all that trunk come in where it should be. There is so much we can do on that. It's fucking exciting. Thank you, Pat's Yeah, you can, you can <laughs> fuck balls, tits. <laughs> So moving on to a shoulder assessment that you guys can easily do. You're just going to need a wall. Go. Cool, so what I'm going to get Lex to do is to stand his feet about half a foot away from the wall. Slight bend in the knees and I want him to get him to push his hips back into the wall. I want him to squeeze nice and tight through his stomach so he can push his back into the wall. Shoulders against the wall. The last thing I'm going to get him to do is give him a nice sexy double chin. This is super uncomfortable. So he can push his head back into the wall. What you don't want to do with that is just tilt your head back. You want to push that chin right. back. Every, this is hard for me. Is it bad that this is hard for me to hold? No, you'd be surprised at how many people will struggle with this. Oh, okay, good. good. Yeah. And all we're going to do, nice and slowly, is one arm at a time, I'm going to get you to keep your thumb pointing up, and I'm going to bring, get it to bring up towards the wall as slow as you can. Nice right, so and slow for me. Keep going, keep going. Keep squeezing and pressing into the wall, and back down for me. Good Ooh. stuff. A lot of tightness on that top yeah. shoulder. Yeah, side as well. Nice and slow, keep pressing into the wall and relax and then bring it back down. That won't even go all the way up. Yeah, exactly. Shit. So you can already see the differences we've got from one side to the other. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know it was this broken. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go same, a bit further out with our feet. Nice and tight through there. Tight through there. Sexy double chin into the wall. Okay, we're going to start at right angle and I'm basically trying to get so your knuckles and your fingertips are against the wall. These are called wall sliders. So keeping everything pressed into the wall, I'm going to reach above my head. Straighten off my arms if possible, and then come back down. So what the natural tendency is to do is for your ribcage to flare up. We're trying to fight against that, really tightly squeeze that down nice and tight through here, and try and do it then. What's going to happen is it's going to want to do that. It's the intent of pinning that down is what we're looking for. Which is something I've advocated a lot of during actual training sessions, just keeping that ribcage pinned down, yeah? Yep. Cool. Hips, to the wall. Hips in. Shoulders against the wall. Lower back pushed in. Lower back pushed in, so nice and tight through there. You Double really chin. try to pin that ribcage down. I always tell people, imagine there's two magnets and you're trying to draw them together. Okay. Okay, so now you're starting your arms um, at right angle. Yeah. It's already quite hard to keep those in touch of the wall, isn't it? Okay, yeah. So the intent is keeping that pin down really slowly. You're going to raise it up and try and straighten up your arms. Very slow. It's and hurting all the way down to my lower back. It hurts, doesn't all it? All the way down to my lower back. Okay. Yeah. Woo! I'm relaxing there. Good. Oh. All the way down from here. Yeah. <laughs> If it's really hard, what is that actually telling us in terms of what's what's going on? We're going to get some more out of it when we do our assessments after. Mm, upper, back well specific, upper, upper back, back specific. Upper back specific, okay. yeah, massively. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> thoracic extensions and thoracic rotation. So we're testing the mobility of the upper back again here. Correct. Using a foam roller. So I'm going to get Lex to be lying on his side, perfectly straight through his legs, and we're going to have his knee on the roller up past 90 degrees. All that's doing is keeping my spine neutral. If I was to let it go, it's pulling my spine out of position. Arm comes out like a T, and I'm going to get my other hand on top of that hand. I'm going to press it out. My eye now stays on this hand, and I'm going to do a big semicircle. Now, I'm going to keep my eye on that hand. As I come over to this side, my tendency is for the, either my hand to come off the floor like that, or, now I want my knee to be pressed into that roller. If you get to here and I do that, that's not good. I want to press that knee into the roller, even if it means my hand comes off the floor. Okay. I'm going to do about 10 reps on each side. So, what do I do with my head? Your eyes are just going to follow your right, your other hand. Eyes going to follow this arm, yeah. so I extend out. Big circle, big semi circle. Keep your eye on that hand. Keep that knee pressed into the roller. That's as far as I can go. Keep going, bring your hand off the floor then, and just keep rotating with it. Good. And then, that's it. And then back around. Wow. That's bad. Is that bad? That's bad. I kept my knee down though. Good. <laughs> Do about eight more. Right. Oh my god. Does this mean I'm completely broken? A little bit. Oh my god. Douchebag syndrome. I've got what? Douchebag syndrome. Invisible carpet syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that can't surely be any worse than the other one. We're about to find out. We'll find out. Oh, it's the same. So what does this mean? Literally, what's the actual problem I've got going on here? Tight upper back. Tight back. Tight upper Tight back. Upper back. Tight upper back. So this is for thoracic extension. So we're going to start with the roller. I want it to be the base of your rib cage. That's where we're going to start. Feet planted face on the floor. And essentially what we're going to do is extend over the roller and then flex it backwards. But the common problem is, is if I do that and I just fall over the roller, first thing that does is my lower back. 
Yeah. Okay, and that's no good. I want to keep that locked down and just move to the upper back part. Rib cage down, nice and tight through there. Keep your chin down and pin those elbows together. It'll be a short range of motion movement, and all I'm going to do is extend over the roller and then come back. I'm going to do it about four or five times with the roller there. As soon as I've done that, I move up a vertebra and do the same thing again. So if there's something wrong, what are we going to see here? Very, very, very limited range of motion. It's a small range of motion anyway, but we'll see it very, very limited if there's tightness in your extension and flexion of your back. Bring your feet underneath you. Yeah, okay, you go. Yeah. Feet flap. Good. Hands behind your head, pin your elbows together and almost pull your head down a little bit so your chin stays tucked and you're going to extend over the roller, but keeping your belly nice and tight. We don't, we don't extend to our lower back. And there. Up. Good. All right, that's close together. Nice. Lower rib cage down. Abs in. Squeeze. You got it. You'll find that as you go through it, the range of motion gets shorter and shorter. So what I'm well. trying to avoid is this with my head. Yeah. The first thing that will want to go is your lower back is going to want to yeah. extend, and obviously your rib cage is going to flare up. So I'm going to try to prevent that. Is that alright? Yeah. We have one part of me that's not fucked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's a super easy way of finding out whether your upper back is uh, tighter than a nun's. We've got some work to do. The good news is that we should see some relatively easy fixes. But we've got some stuff to work on. If I wasn't broken, this would be no fun, would it? So it's good to see all these. And the basics of this is you've got to get fucking real with yourself. What's wrong with you? What needs fixing? People see me train. I train to a good standard. I'm intelligent in the way I do it. Yeah, I still have all these problems that uh, just build up over time and uh, that you know that mentality we all have is just push through i think that's the culprit of most of these things anyway onward next we're going to look at how the hips and the glutes are functioning we're going to look at some asymmetries from side to side um, it's going to give us quite a good indication of what's going on what's going wrong and this is one of my favorite things to use to assess glutes and hips <laughs> all you're going to need for this one is a plate and a jake. I'm going to have Lex be doing this barefoot, so do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Standing in the middle of the plate, all your weight is going to be through one leg. You're going to reach out in front of you, keeping this foot flat, and I'm just going to touch the floor with my one foot in front of me. I'm then going to come into the side and do the same thing, and then the same on the opposite side. As I get more comfortable with this, I can start reaching and stretching out as far as I can. So one, two, three, that's going to be one. I'm going to get to do it five times on each side and that should give us a good indication of what's going on. And if there's an error, what will we see? If... Loads of instability falling over, which side, which way is going. If you find one side easier than the other, there's loads that we can look for on this one. Okay, what do you see? So Lex has already mentioned to me that he's got uh, his left glue isn't as far as yeah, his right. Yeah. And this assessment has picked up that immediately. Anytime he's, there's any knee flexion, it's dragging it straight in, and you can see him having to fire it to keep pulling that knee out where it should be, out over his pinky toe. Every time there's any knee flexion, it was just straight, bam, like that. And that plays a huge part, hip, knee, and So that's, the gl that's, that's that glute med issue. Yep. Easy to fix, though. Easy fix. Easy fix. Easy fix for something that, for Easy me, has fix. plagued me for no shit five years now. Easy fix. I've been to NHS physios, I've been to sports physios, but because I'm not rehabbing in an active form, not specifically targeting that problem and haven't been, that's why it's still there. So hopefully, annoyingly, in a few weeks, hopefully it should be see a big difference. Given the stimulus that we're going to be working under, I think you should be able to see a pretty quick turnaround in the system as well. If you're going to be in the gym four or five days a week, you're going to have to consider yourself an athlete. You're going to have to consider yourself as being in a performance environment. And all these things are something you need to be paying attention to. And if you can do this early on, not like me, do as I say, not as I do, prevention is better than cure. So start doing this shit now. Check things now where there's instability, start working on it. This will pay off in the long run. It will help you build a better physique overall anyway. So you fix these things now, they're gonna help develop that more overall aesthetic looking physique anyway, because those weak areas that some of us suffer from now as a result of this, mm -hmm. they won't be apparent in you. So this is all the benefit. It might be a bit boring, it might be a little laborious to do all this stuff, but it's these little things that build up over a long period of time to give you one big result. We've got the problems. Here's the start of the fixing points, and it's all going to be done with this simple little piece of apparatus. And we're going to start off with three different exercises, and you can progress with this band without having to change up to it. You don't go for a heavy band, don't go for a thicker band. So starting with those shoulder problems, let's go. So what we're going to do first, 
is we're going to do what's called dislocates. The way you can progress this with the band is by how narrow you have your hands on the band. The closer, the harder it's going to be, the wider, the easier it's going to be. So we'll start middle of the road relatively straightforward. Arms stay straight and with this one we're going to make sure that rib cage is pinned down. Nice and tight through there. You're going to go all the way over and all the way back. Good. And we're looking for no compensations whatsoever. The most common compensation you'll see is his rib cage is going to flare out. So we're going to try and pin that down. Exactly. Don't let that happen. Keep it down. Correct. And cool. Just like that. Yep. And we want to build some volume in with these, so we can sort of go for 20, 25 reps. As you build through it, you can start bringing your hands closer. As you build a bit of fluidity into the shoulders, another compensation is going to happen. Arms start bending as we get tighter. So we're trying to keep your arms completely straight throughout the whole movement. The whole movement. And then. Good. Ooh. Good. Yeah. Feeling a bit tighter that one. We keep head up and chin in. Head up, chin in. You got it. This feels good. Okay. Sweet. Next. Same band, same position. He's going to start out in front of him. Heads <laughs> out of the camera. <laughs> hang on, wait, hang on. Yeah, we rewind. <laughs> wait. There we go. Ah. We're going to do banded pull apart, so we're going to look at something specific here, though. So, same thing with the band, you're going to have it out in front of you, but you're going to have your palms facing up. For those of you that are interested, this is for external rotation of your shoulder. Rib cage stays down, and you're going to pull the band apart. What you're not going to do is you're going to go excessively range. That's perfect range. Bring it back in for us, and when you bring it back in, you don't want the band to go slack. You want to keep constant tension on the band. Okay. Last thing we're going to need to do is try and relax through your traps. I tell people, try and pin your shoulder blades into oh, your yeah. back pockets. You can vary the height of it as well. You can do it lower to belly button, you can do it higher to chin, you can do it to the bridge of your nose, you can do it wherever it wants. You don't have to be strict with where you're okay. going. So that's a scapular exercise for that good posture, helping keep those shoulders back engaged yeah. in those weird delts. Next! So anchoring the band. Yep. You can anchor it to a rig, you can anchor it to whatever you want it. So next one we're going to do, banded face pulls. We're going to anchor it to a point there. Um, like a standard face pull, we're going to keep knuckles down, elbows driving nice and high, but we're going to try and relax a little bit through our traps. As you come over the back, I like to call, uh, it's like feeding the swans, you'll end up showing off your swans like that. So we're going to go higher elbows and try and get your elbows lower than the knuckles. Good. And again, we're trying to go for 20-25, squeeze it at the back, and we're doing that. All we're doing is setting posture, Getting all your little stabilizing muscles that weren't firing before, firing, beginning of your workout. What I do find definitely helps with this is to consciously relax your neck. If you relax your neck, you've got less chance of doing this pigeon neck and a lot of people do with this. If you relax your neck, you'll subconsciously relax your traps as well. Absolutely. Tense your neck, tense your traps, simple. Next, so that's your three to get working with and now let's move downstairs to the real trouble spots. No, you filthy people, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> it was. Yeah. So what we're going to do on this one is we're going to do a normal reverse lunge, but we're doing uh, an R and T method. This band is going to be pulling this knee. He's going to be pulling it in. He's going to have to fight against the band to pull it out, which is going to get all his stabilizers going, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to do a slight forward lean with this as we drop into the floor. Make that really, really, really difficult. Yeah. Fucking hell! It can be progressed with the same band. The closer you go to the actual point, the easier it'll be. The harder, the further away you come, the harder it'll be. I can't explain to you guys how hard this really is. My whole body wants to do this. It's really weird. From here, lean forward. Oh my god, it's so. You can see it. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it. I feel like I want to hold something. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Down. Oh my god, it's really bad. It's really bad. Ah. Okay, I cannot explain to you how everything on me feels like it wants to kick out and that's because that glute isn't firing. So the glute me, the job of it, if you ever see someone, an old person especially walk when they've had hip replacements, you'll see them kick out. You might have a granddad or a grandma that's had the same thing. That's because they cut through the glute me to put those hips in, then usually they're not rehabbed properly. So what we're seeing here is that exact thing happening in me. So this for me right now sucks, that's how it should look. Look how strong and stable that looks. And this is what we want to be progressing to. This is going to be a huge, huge, huge difference maker. So we're going to look at the squatting pattern as a whole and how we can address that. Get some rooting into the floor, get everything moving the way it should be. The best corrective exercise is an exercise done right. In your normal squatting pattern, I'm basically going to put this underneath your toes, like so. And it's your job to not let that band pick. slacken. So the band's tight right now, and the idea is, is to keep it tight by keeping so we're doing little toe, big toe, heel. So what I get people doing is I get people talking about the pad that's underneath their big toe, the pad that's underneath their little toe and their heel. There's a tripod. We're squeezing that tripod into the floor and we're ripping it apart. That big toe is now rooted right into the floor. Okay. So it goes under my little toe as well? Yep. Okay, and then squat. And squat as normal. Key that band up, good. Nice and slow, nice and slow. A lot, of, a lot of tightness. Or... How much harder was that than just doing normal? Really hard. I feel like I can't. I've got. I can't go as deep yeah. immediately. Yeah. 
because we're eliminating the possible compensation. Oh yeah, that's already kicking up all up here, yeah. right into the hip flexors. Yeah. All our little stabilizers right now are like, what the fuck is oh, going so on? So again, that's just a body weight movement. Yeah. A couple of times a week. Yeah. Before you do a main session, before you do a big lift, all good. There we go. So again, that's another one for that hip stability, but it's also a good one just to check to get that mechanism and that chain reaction for a squat, getting that correct pathway in the body used to moving through that plane of motion. Good right. movement patterns. <laughs> So there you go, that is our simple basic start out for you guys. You've got some immediate homework to be doing, so have I. I've got a lot of catch up to do there. You have three shoulder exercises going there, and you actually have, we did the reverse lunge and the squat pattern, yep. but you can actually also use where you saw us on the plate doing the three point touch. Yep. Do continue to use that, that's not just an assessment method, that's actually an exercise you can implement to help build up that stability. You can even, if you have the opportunity, you can change the surface. It doesn't have to be a plate. If you've got a softer surface, a sandbag, or uh, I've got some soft cushions, anything like that. This is a big thing. Don't ever assume, I get this all the time. I get people messaging, uh, messaging me saying, I'm not progressing, but my diet and training solid. But if you're not progressing, one of those is definitely wrong, if not both. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a basic thing. Something, 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 something well. there needs fixing. Mm -hmm. So never assume you're doing everything correctly. In fact, always assume there's, gonna, there's room for improvement. And if you're positively critical, that's what I like to call it, positive critique of yourself, you'll, you'll forever be catching yourself doing something wrong and be able to fix it. That's where we're gonna start this week, but in yep. further weeks, what I'm gonna be looking to, to get into. Hopefully you'll see some quite quick turnarounds with it. We're gonna sort of delve into the more technicality side of things, make it sport, more sport specific for yep. what we've got coming up. Um, and take it from there, it's going to be exciting. The ultimate aim is to improve your power output in the cage, in the ring, improve your resiliency and keep you in the game for a long time. Simple as that. That doesn't sound too bad to me. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope this has been... I know it's a lot to take in in one go, but this is the basics and we all need to start somewhere. If you don't start, you can never progress. So a huge thank you to Jake. It's been a pleasure. Cheers, my man. He's got some pretty perky nipples, but you'll be seeing him on a regular basis. Check him out in the links in the description below. I've been Lex, that's been Jake. There's been a few penis jokes. You're welcome. We're out of here. <laughs> Boom, baby. <laughs> There's been loads of penis jokes. <laughs> it's all been penis jokes. <laughs> Lately, I've been doing shit different. Cooking like a chef. I've been all up in the kitchen. Had to make a move. Had to make a little distance. A lot of people tripping. They could never see the vision. Fuck that. Tell them bounce.